Well, hey there guys, how you all doing today? My name's Paul and this is the Griffin Benchmark Channel and today I've got a remarkable video adventure for us to uh, take together and it involves putting this new wick that comes in focus there into this exceedingly large catalytic heater. This particular model is a kerosene cat heater it's the RMC95C6B, and I've used it for a whole year now. And I may or may not have used some pump diesel and some other different fuel varieties through this besides kerosene. And uh, so it's time to replace the wick so that we can preserve the efficiency and uh, get the uh, type of heat that this thing was intended to put off again. Um, and maybe it'll smell good again too, so we'll see. But anyway... Let's jump right into this and uh, we can learn how to do this together because I've never done it. So, let's see what we have here. Alright, so getting right into this, first thing you have to do is remove this compression handle at the top here. Uh, and that comes out and unlocks the top lid too of the housing, as you can see here. And then if you look down inside there, you can see the, the flame spreader. The flame usually comes out from around that uh, copper looking ring there. And I'll demonstrate that here at the end of the video when we do the test lighting. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver and uh, a pair of pliers, as you'll see here pretty soon. Pretty big size screws there. There's going to be two of them. One on each side of these Dyna glows. And then the whole housing with that flame spreader on the inside should just come right, lift right off the top like that. And that'll expose your igniter and your backfire ring and, and uh, the wick housing. That's the wick adjustment knob, and then that's where the wick comes out at the top there. You'll see it come up there. And as you can see, that thing is chock full of burnt paraffin from some of that alternative fuel I may or may not have used from the gas station. <laughs> so, Okay, so this adjustment knob has to come off first. And then you'll take that lower housing off, as I'll demonstrate here, and that will expose the wick housing and the backfire ring and all that good stuff. Um, the first thing I'll demonstrate here is the fire extinguisher. Um, to extinguish these once they're lit, you push the, 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 uh, the uh, wick retention knob there that I just did. You've seen the, the wick pop down in there, and that puts the fire out. So here I am removing that lower housing. This comes right off there, and then I'll have to take the fuel cap off since it's attached which I'm thankful for because I would have lost it by now so okay so now that we got that housing off we'll need to uh, remove the backfire preventer and that will further expose our wick housing just inspect everything as you go here and next we're going to need a pair of pliers to loosen these four wing nuts that we have around the wick housing. And pretty much guarantee you'll need a pair of pliers for this if uh, your heater's been going for any amount of time with all the heating and cooling that's been doing. But uh, I'll spare you the details of getting all these out and skip ahead here a little bit. Okay, just getting to that last wing nut here and that should release the wick housing get going on this boy I've got an overwhelming smell of paraffin while I'm working on this uh, from that old that old wick and uh, I guess I'll come clean here um, I heard on YouTube that you could burn diesel fuel through these and so you know if you add the fuel additive and 
maybe a little isopropyl alcohol to the mixture. Well, I did all that, and, and it just immediately clogged my wick off with paraffin, as you can see here. And so, don't do that. If you've got one of these, don't use diesel unless you, you know, for, unless you want to follow the other line of thinking on YouTube, where they say if you use 100% cotton wick, that'll work. Now on these, the bottom's cotton, and then the top is is fiberglass. And you can see how dirty the igniter housing is there. So, in my advice, don't use diesel. Okay, so next step is to <clears throat> remove the old wick. Take the lower wick compression ring off. You can see the tabs in there that one-way tabs that hook into the lower portion of the wick and then I'm going to take the upper portion of the wick off with the metal tabs the little metal dowels that stick through the holes for the raising and lowering mechanism and take all that out and there she is simple as that boy that thing sure has been used used it a lot last year last winter I'll tell you, if you just take some foam pieces and insulate your garage door, if you don't have an insulated garage door, and get one of these for your two-car garage, if you got one, it worked great. Yeah, you don't need the instructions. <laughs> I hope. Guess we'll find out, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm just looking at these two wicks here, and it looks like yeah you can you can definitely tell the height difference from the old wick to the new wick you know someday i sure would like to get a hundred percent cotton wick and try it if you could use pump diesel it would be so much less expensive take the uh, inner wick ring out and then you've got to push those metal dowels through the proper holes it takes a little bit of doing, but it's not it's really not that hard to do this. It can seem a little overwhelming, I suppose, to some people, um, taking one of these apart, but just remember, it all goes back together the same way it came apart. Okay, and then once you get that in that uh, inner trim ring there, that wick trim ring, I don't know the proper names of all, any of these uh, different bits and pieces, so, you know, <laughs> if, you, if, the, if they're called something else, I apologize, but they've got to come through that uh, wick razor and lower mechanism there, as you can see those individual metal dowels do, so just pay, pay close attention to that when you're doing this. And then I'm going to reinstall the uh, lower wick compression ring as I call it and it's got a nice little fitting there it just kind of screw says open and close right there it just kind of screws onto that lower housing there you have it so now the trick is you've got to hold all those metal pins in their proper alignment while you put the wick back over the igniter housing as shown here and really this isn't that bad either it went it went pretty slick you just put your hand inside there and kind of press it out to hold all those metal dowels in and it's pretty easy and you just gotta it's a, it's a nice tight fit like it's supposed to be just slide it down align those proper holes up and and this is the this is a good point where you want to try your Try to raise and lower your wick and make sure it's all the same height. You want it all to be uniform height all the way around. I believe it's about an uh, eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch all the way around. I just made, I'm not sure what the measurement is. I just made sure it was all uniform. And then you want to test all these mechanisms. You know, your, your safety shut off there, that brass weight. Very, very important to test that for obvious reasons. You don't want a gigantic Molotov cocktail in your garage while you're working on your car. Just reapply all these wing nuts and 
now that the mechanism has been tested. Testing the igniter here a little bit, you can see it heating up. And going in and out, and up and down, and all around. Everything looks like it's working as it should, so we'll just uh, get on with it here. Get on to the next step. And just as one extra precaution here, I am going to take the pliers and just make sure that each one of these wing nuts are, are nice and tight. It's always good to take one extra step, especially when you're dealing with something, something like this. Looks good. Okay, and then I'm just going to, again, going in reverse engineering, reverse order here. I'm going to reapply the backfire ring. I'm calling it the backfire ring. I really don't know if that's what it's called, but I'm assuming that it's to keep the flames away from the fuel tank down below. And then we're going to reinstall the lower housing with the fuel cap right over here. Just like so. There we go. Fuel cap back on. Things are going just as they should. Next we'll put that uh, main housing back on. And before we get to that we'll throw this wick adjuster knob back on here. Give everything a try. Make sure everything's still working okay. It's always good to test all the way through the whole process. That way if something is messed up, you can fix it before it gets too bad. Emergency shutoff works good. Everything looks good. All right, one of the moments we've all been waiting for. Main housing is getting lowered back down onto the lower housing. And we'll just uh, reinstall our large Phillip head screws over here on each side. Alright, next we're going to put our flame spreader down in there, and I do know that's the name of this. That's actually what made uh, these uh, old oil heaters famous was the patent on that flame spreader. So it just spreads the flame out right around that ring down there. And that's what makes the magic happen. Okay and last but certainly not least we got to line up these holes here and put the lid to the, the housing back on. And remember, it's for that compression handle, and it's got those slots. The compression handle is slotted, so it can only go in one way. You gotta line everything up and pull it apart and get it in those holes just right. As you'll see here shortly. It's not easy to line these holes up sometimes. There we go. And you might notice something different about mine. Can you see it? Ah, <laughs> good eye. Yep, I took the safety grating off of it. Why? Because I enjoy the nostalgia of an old time looking oil heater. And one of these days I'm going to get one. But uh, until I can fork out the cash for something like that, I got this one. And you know, the handle moves back and forth a little bit without the grating, but it's alright. Just gotta be careful. Uh, I like the way this one looks. So, yeah. Anyway, just want to point that out. Okay, there it is. 1K kerosene. That's the stuff you want to put in these indoor space heaters. And there's, I've done a ton of research on this since I clogged up my old one with paraffin and everything else. 1K kerosene only. The biggest reason is the sulfur content. Uh, you know, 1K kerosene is ultra filtered for indoor use. It doesn't produce any exhaust. 
you can't smell it. I mean, it's it burns a lot hotter, uh, so you don't go through as much. There's just a, there's a whole lot of reasons to use 1K kerosene. Um, the only bad reason, you know, for one one K kerosene is that it's very expensive. It's anywhere from eight to twelve bucks a gallon. Um, I, I picked this up in Walmart for I think eight fifty a gallon, and I pick it up anytime I can when I'm down there. If they have some in stock, I'll grab it if it's on sale. Uh, but yeah, that's the one K kerosene is the only stuff you want to use in your indoor lamps and and uh, space heaters because it's uh it's what's intended for these appliances and i learned the hard way that uh if you use diesel or any of the other things in, in these um well first and foremost you don't know what you're going to be breathing when you burn them and second of all uh they just they clog up the fil the wicks and it just doesn't work so anyway 1K kerosene. So on this particular model, uh, one gallon of kerosene puts it just under a half tank, and you know these these particular Dynaglows have a really handy little uh, fuel meter here. See it kind of bounces around, there's a float in the tank there, and they work really well, so. Okay, so now we got the tank filled with 1K kerosene. We gotta wait for one hour to let the wick saturate, and then we can light it for the first time. So I'll skip ahead here, and here we are about an hour and a half later, you got to raise the wick all the way up to the top and then you push the pedal down here and it looks like I need to replace the batteries on my igniter but I think we can get it done here come on come on you can do it there we go come on <laughs> there it goes all right, so you can see the flame slowly go around the whole wick there. It's going nicely, so you can set that down. And then what you want to do here, now that's the flame spreader. That's that whole flame spreader uh, mechanism that I was showing you and talking about earlier. So you got to wiggle that around and make sure all the flames are coming up evenly all around as it lights. And it looks like we're doing pretty good there. Okay, so I'm gonna skip ahead here a little bit. Now as this thing warms up, you'll notice the flames climb higher and higher and they get brighter and brighter and it starts to burn hotter, off the oil. Now a word of caution here, you gotta adjust this flame spreader until all those flames are coming around that circle, uh, you know, pretty nice and uniformly. But a word of caution, after, after three, four, five minutes, be careful because the little spring on that flame spreader that I'm adjusting down there becomes very hot and if you touch it after that you're gonna end up sizzling some little sausages and they're not the kind you like to eat so be careful anyway this looks pretty good so next step and I'll show you some of that ambiance here we'll turn off this light look at that isn't that just nice it's not as nice as the old ones, but you know what? It works. Here's a nice shot of it with all the lights turned off. It sure does. I don't know. You have to, the, the camera doesn't do it much justice, but it's it's pretty nice. It offers a nice warm feeling. Okay, so here we are at 2:14 in the a.m. Showing my phone there. Oh, 215. So it's been running for a while. It's nice and warmed up. The flame should be nice and uniformly spread around the flame spreader. And they are. If they weren't, I would be using needle nose pliers to adjust the flame spreader. Not my fingers at this point. It's too hot. Nice and warm. So we'll check and see what the 
degrees are in Fahrenheit. Uh, about 53. Okay, let's leave it here and see what we come back with here. Okay, now for the moment of truth, 2.29 in the a.m. Let's go check it out. It's had what, I don't know, 15 minutes. Started off with, still burning nice and hot it looks like. Yep, yeah, looks good. Yeah, it's perfect. I want those flames to be about a half inch. Oh yeah, look at that. It's already gone up a couple degrees in 15 minutes. That's not bad. Not too shabby. Well, alright guys, I sure want to thank you for joining me on this momentous occasion. And uh, this adventurous video of changing the wick in a Dynaglow. 23,000 BTU catalytic heater model number RMC 95C6B and uh, it's been an interesting fun video to make I'm doing a little more narration and stuff with it because I just feel like I can hit the talking points better that way but well guys I'm going to bed it's been a long night but uh, you have a good one, and I'll leave you with the nice, comfortable glow of my little kerosene catalytic heater. You guys have a great day.